Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to focus on concurrency of the angle bisectors of a triangle. Before we go over this figure that we have right here, let's have the definition of concurrency or point of concurrency. Point of concurrency is the point of intersection of the lines, rays, or line segments. So in this case right here, this point that we have here is the point of concurrency because all of these um line segments are meeting or intersecting at this point. Now, the other word that we have here is angle bisector. Angle bisector is defined as the ray, segment, line, or plane that divides an angle into two equal congruent angles. So in this figure that we have here, our segments AC, DC, and BC our angle bisector. This means that this AC actually cuts angle EAG into two equal pieces. That means this angle is congruent to the other angle right there. So it was cut in half. And so from here, we can also say that our BC was an angle bisector. That means this angle is congruent to that other angle right there. So I put two tick marks there. That means both of them are equal. Both of these are congruent. Now we also have um, on the other vertex right here, this two angles. I'm going to use uh, three tick marks for that. So this um, two angles right here are congruent. So these two angles are congruent, these two angles are congruent. Again, it's because this line AC, DC, and CB are angle bisector. So that we can go ahead and write that in statement up here. Okay, so these angles are congruent, these angles are congruent, and these angles are congruent. That's what this statement is telling us. Now, I'd like you to look at this very carefully. This point of intersection or this point of concurrency that we have here is called in center. So this intersect, there's a special name for this. We call it as in center. This is called in center because this is actually the center of a circle that fits this triangle that we have here. And we call this circle as in circle or an inscribed circle. This means that if we draw um, an angle bisector and we look at the in center or the point of intersection, and if we are going to draw a line that is perpendicular to the sides, so we're talking about these lines right here, these are actually the um, radius of the in circle, which is coming from the in center. So we can therefore go ahead and say that, that's the first statement right there, we can therefore say that since radius of a circle would all be the same around the circle, we can go ahead and say that EC is equal to GC and that is also equal to FC. So these three line segments that we have here are again radius of the in circle coming from the in center. So then they are equal to each other. Now let's have some examples. In the figure, MC, HC, KC are angle bisectors of triangle MHK. Point C is the in center. So if we are given that information, we can go ahead and say that this angle right here would be congruent to each other because again, that's the um, angle bisector. This two um, angles here would be congruent to each other. And this uh, two angles right here would also be congruent to each other. So I label that. So these two are congruent, these two are congruent, and these two are congruent. Since point C is the in center, so that we can go ahead and create an in circle around this in center. So that means our CP, CT, and CE 
are the radius of the circle. That means they are all equal to each other. So that we can go ahead and fill this in. So we're looking for TC. So TC would be equal to CP. So both of these would be the same. So that means this is 13. And we're looking for CE. So CE is again another radius of the circle. So that would also be 13. So we're looking for angle PMC. So that is from P going to M and then going to C. So this corner right here, so I already placed the tick on that and that is congruent to angle EMC. So this is congruent to, I um, mean that's angle EMC. And then we also have angle TKC. So that's TKC that is congruent to this other angle right here. So that is congruent to EKC. So that's angle EKC. Now we have another problem here. If CE is 3X minus 2, so that's the CE right there, then X is equal to blank. So we know that CE is 13. So we can go ahead and put 13 in here because that's the measure of CE that is equal to PC. That is 13 equals going to be 3X minus 2. So we wanted to solve for X. So that is plus 2 to both sides, plus 2 here. So then we can go ahead and cross the 2 out. We're left with 3X is equal to 15. We divide both sides by 3. We divide this by 3. So then we can go ahead and cross that out. Our X then is 5. So this is our value of X. So I can put 5 in there. Now let's have the measures of the following. So first we are given a measure of angle TKC. So that is T. KC is 54. So provided that this is 54, what is, so I can go ahead and label that up here. So 54 degrees. So what is EKC? So EKC, remember they are congruent. So this is 54 as well. So I can go ahead and write 54 in here. So this is 54 degrees because again, these two are congruent. So if angle H M K, so that is H M K. So this whole thing right here is 48. So that's H M K. So this whole thing is 48. What is the measure of P M C? So we're looking for P. M C. Since this was bisected, that means it was cut in half. This means that this is 24 and this is also 24. So 24 and 24, that comes out 48. So then the value of angle P M C is 24 degrees. That's it. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.